The headlines this morning from the New York Times, the Associated Press, no matter where you look, the Republicans are voting early, helping to break records. The polling also is indicating uh, a swing in the polling for former President Donald Trump, kind of moving in his direction. Joining us now is the RNC co-chair, Laura Trump. Uh, joining us now, uh, thank you so much for taking some time out. Well, thank you for having me. What do you think when you see the early voting numbers? Now, this is kind of like a little bit of a switch from 2020, uh, when there were some questions, at least coming from Trump, regarding voter fraud and mail-in ballots. But now the former president just encouraging uh, his supporters, his voters, to go out and to vote early. And it looks like the numbers appear to be backing that up. Yeah, They're well, out. this is not just a switch from 2020, Angela. This is a switch really in anything we've ever seen in terms of early vote totals for Republicans. Traditionally, Democrats outpace Republican voters in in-person early voting numbers by around 80 right. to 20. And right now what we're seeing is that in a lot of states, a lot of these um, early vote battleground states, they are either just barely, uh, you know, Republicans are just barely edging out Democrats or they're actually really beating Democrats. And I think we really tried from the RNC and the Trump campaign to send the message out there mm -hmm. that we want you to vote early. Look, there, there's stuff that happens in everybody's life. I have two young kids, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're a parent, whether you have a, a job, whether you get sick or there's a natural, you know, weather phenomenon in your area, you never know what's going to happen. So we want to encourage people to bank their vote and go vote early. And obviously they have listened and uh, we've been very excited to see the numbers coming out. You talk about the raw numbers here. We have them for you right here. 19 million people nearly around there have cast ballots. We also have a breakdown of what we're seeing in some of these states. Now, it's on the screen right here. You have nearly 30 percent in Pennsylvania. You have other states um, in Arizona and Nevada where Republicans are actually outvoting Democrats. And then you have close to 30 percent in your home state of North Carolina. Now, when you look at the percentages right here of people voting early Republicans, is there a certain percentage that you have in mind that you want to see from early voting going into Election Day that could mean a Trump victory? Well, I think what it really means for us is uh, no matter what that percentage is on Election Day, it's it's allowing us to turn out what we call low propensity voters. Okay. These are people who may not vote every election cycle. They may not have voted, you know, in the past two, three or four election cycles. But we know when they vote, they traditionally vote Republican. And so what this is allowing us to do is once people are voting um, that we have on our, our list in terms of people who are registered, we know are active participants in the process, we take them off our list after they vote. And then it allows us to take our resources and actively seek out those low propensity voters. And we believe that's a lot of who is turning out right now. But as we head closer to election day, the more people are voting and early voting that we have on our list, we're taking them off and we're plugging new people in. And I think that is really gonna be the key for us uh, this election. And um, we've been very excited to see what has happened so far. Let's talk about, cause you've been doing a lot of press lately. You were on the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne. I got to catch some of that. You're really trying to reach out to uh, black and Latino voters. And the numbers are, are showing, at least if you believe the polling, that Trump is polling better than other Republicans when it comes to maybe black and Latino voting. So what is your voters, what is your internal polling telling you when it comes to those numbers, those voting blocks? Well, I think that's right. And I think what people have realized over the past four years is that something has not been working in this country. And I think people, you know, 80% of the country, no matter where you live and no matter who you are, says that the country is on the wrong track and people are ready for a change. And so we're delivering that message everywhere. Look, you've seen Donald Trump himself go to the Bronx. You've seen him in Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta. These are places where typically Republican candidates for president don't go because people say don't go there it's a solid blue area it's really not going to do anything for you but donald trump himself has said look i'm going to go out and i'm going to ask for people's votes i'm going to talk directly to the american people and i will remind people how much better off they were when I was in office. He wants to work for every single American. And so, yeah, I was excited to be able to deliver that message uh, on The Breakfast Club. And we're, we're anywhere we can go and talk to a voter in this country, we are happy to go. And you've seen Donald Trump lead that charge. Now, going back to voter turnout, you know, despite recovery um, from Helene, your home state, North Carolina, saw a record turnout, I believe, on the first day of voting. But Trump is taking some heat just regarding the FEMA response and criticizing the FEMA response um, in that state. Uh, what is your response to people who say that that criticism may actually hamper response? 
Well, I think when I talk to actual people on the ground who live in these areas, it's been very frustrating for them because, you know, the $750 that everyone heard about is actually a loan. You have to apply for that. Many people are not getting approved for those loans. And I think it, it's a bigger conversation about how we're spending our tax dollars. And I think when the American people are suffering in whatever way it is, especially in the wake of a natural disaster like a hurricane, and you see that we've dumped so much money over a billion dollars into actually rehoming and resettling people who broke our laws to come here, I think it's very frustrating. And I don't think Donald Trump is the only person who's been talking about that. Um, I do know those people in Western North Carolina need a lot more help. They are not recovered yet. Uh, and so we're hoping for the best for them. And, and I know that there have been a lot of folks in state, a lot of local people who have pitched in. And it actually has been beautiful to see the spirit of the state show up in such a way. Yeah, seeing people come together to help one another is always remarkable. RNC co-chairperson Laura Trump, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.